The Apple MacBook Air is a brilliant device. This is an older one and uh, connectivity wise, it really doesn't have a lot. So two USB-C connections, one of those is its charge port and a headphone port. Also, everything's soldered in on this. So if you want to update the storage, you can't unless you've got incredible soldering skills. So a dock like this is a big improvement for a MacBook. But I'll be trying it with other devices as well. So this is a 12-in-1 docking station. Oh, and it comes with a nice case. Some basic instructions. So I've got a heatsink for an NVMe drive. I've got a USB-C to C cable. And here's the dock. And the thing I really like about this is the lid is magnetic. So the access to the NVMe drive is just instant. And I change out drives a lot. I can see that it's got all the different sizes, so from 2230 right up to 2280. And I'll go through the connectivity on the websites, but just to have a look around it, you can see there are loads of connections on here. And the design on this is no screw operation, so this little bit pushes in and twists around, and that holds the NVMe drive in place. So I'll put a drive in there. I've actually got an Orico one I've used on a separate video. So let's pop that in. And this bit will go on here and twist it. I can put this heatsink back on now. Obviously you do have the option of this one which does have some bigger thin so that's probably more effective again. And it looks like we've got three thermal pads in here for different drives. And I've got a spare one of these little fasteners as well. So lid on. And there is a fan on this. I guess it vents through here. I've seen it on the pictures. So let's open up this and let's plug it in with its own cable. So we've got PC in is the label. And it recognizes my drive. Now this has got a Raspberry Pi operating system on here at the moment, so that's why it says boot FS. And we can have a look in there so we can see that that's working. Could run a speed test to see how fast it is. Now this is, I think, USB 3.2. So we won't get the full potential of the drive, but we're still getting 2,000 megabits per second write and read 2.8. So it's still nice and fast, and so this is being powered by my MacBook at the moment. But if I want to plug it in, I've got a power bank here. Let's just plug that in to, where's the power go? Oh, around the front here. Oh, interesting, it does eject the drive momentarily when you plug in power. I wonder if that always happens. I mean, it obviously was doing a speed test at the time. So if I was to unplug and then plug in, yeah. So plugging in power ejects the drive. So you better to power it up first and then plug it into the computer. So let's check out the specs on the Amazon listing. So there will be a promotional code in the description, so have a look out for that. And what have we got? So 12-in-1 USB-C hub with M.2 SSD, and it supports NVMe and SATA M.2 drives as well. 10 gigabits per second USB 3.2 speeds. The HDMI outputs on it can support a single 8K display or dual 4K displays using an HDMI and a DisplayPort connection. You can see Mac and Windows listed here. I've tested this recently on another dock. You have mirror mode, so basically the, the main device can support two other displays showing the same content. But you can also do it where, uh, on Windows especially, it supports two separate displays together with the one on the laptop. But with my MacBook, all it will do is just mirror the second display, so like here, so we've got the MacBook display, and then the secondary display would be the same on both screens. So in this case, it's better on Windows. I don't know if it's different on more advanced MacBooks. Mine's a, mine's a 2020 MacBook Air, so one of the first M1 series MacBooks, and they were lacking in display outputs. So the 100 watt is an input, and it can output up to 85 watts, because obviously it's taken 15 watts or up to 15 watts for the device itself because this could be fully loaded with drives and you could have an NVMe in there as well, an SD card, uh, a micro SD card, it's, it's pretty impressive. So it must have a USB sound card in there as well because it supports audio through this as well. Gigabit Ethernet, 
and SD and micro SD. I do like the magnetic cover and just the way it takes a drive, it's super simple. So they talk about what type of USB-C port you've got on your device to see what sort of features you get. So not all USB-C ports support display output. So it's worth knowing the different symbols and how to verify which one you've got. And they've got some others based on this drive. Oh, I see. So they do some without the display output, without the 3.5mm output. And also this latest one I've got is the 8K capable one. But they do loads of drives based on this system. I like the way the ports are labelled. So everything has uh, information on it. Like these, they actually have 5 gigabits written on these two USB 3s and it's got 10 gigabits, so you know this is your fastest USB 3 and the USB-C output is 10 gig as well. And we can see that this is the PC connection and also this is where power goes in. And there's that fan behind the scenes which I still haven't heard yet. I think it said it was when it gets to 60 degrees, I saw it somewhere. Yeah, I can't see it there but I, I'm sure I read 60 degrees, which I really respect because I just like a drive to be silent and obviously if it's working really hard I'm happy with it cooling itself with a fan but if it doesn't need it some devices have fans that just come on and stay on all the time and I think that's a lazier design so yeah I really like the way they've done it on this. Now before I do more things on the Mac I'm going to see if this boots a Raspberry Pi because I've already got a Raspberry Pi operating system on here but then I can clear the drive off and put something else on it. So on the NVMe drive that's in here I have a Raspberry Pi operating system. Let's power it on and see if it boots. So I'm not providing any power to this. The Pi is powering the Caddy. And it looks like it's booting up. And if I tap and go for diagnostics, let's run a speed test. Now, this isn't gonna be the most ideal speed test because it's just going through a USB 3 socket on the Pi. And also the Pi is powering the device, but we'll give it a try anyway. Now that was pretty quick. So I've got, uh, so the target for pass for storage on a Raspberry Pi is 10,000. We have got 333,516. Uh, the target for random write speed is 500. We've got 31,507. And the target for random read speed is 1,500. And we've got 29,654. So you could definitely run your Raspberry Pi from this drive via USB. Nice to see that it's compatible because, as I say, certain devices aren't compatible with the Raspberry Pi. Now, I've also got a micro SD card which I can put in here. And let's see what happens if we try and boot it up with both an NVMe and a micro SD card in there. What's it going to prioritize? So, it prioritized the NVMe drive. Let's shut that down. And how easy is it to remove the drive with? my fingers so let's twist that around and that pops out if you can keep the little plastic adapter on there it's definitely easier putting it back in so let's boot up without an NVMe drive in there and see if it boots from the SD card yeah that's worked so I can use this as a boot device for SD card or NVMe on a Raspberry Pi so this is running KDE Plasma Mobile and as you can see Everything's all working from the SD card. And again, I've got no other power in this. So it's all working passively. I've had no fan come on yet. So it's been completely silent up to this point. So I've set this up with my MacBook. So this is my MacBook running Mac OS, but also I'm running a virtual machine. This is UTM uh, and it's Linux. So this is basically KDE Plasma. And if I launch the browser, you can see that it's all working and everything. If I click on a story, it's nice and snappy. Oh, it wants me to log in maybe later. You can see it's nice and snappy. Let's go back to show desktop. So if I was to close this down, and then when I launch UTM again, you can see I can launch Linux from here. But if I right click, I've got an option to move. Do you want to move this VM to another location? This will copy the data to the new location. Now I'm not going to do it yet because I need to format this drive because it's got a Raspberry Pi operating system on there at the moment. So let's go into disk utility. So let's erase that and I'll call it two terabyte and erase. Okay, that's all done. Let's have a look on the drive and we'll just create a folder. We're going to call it UTM. 
And now we're going to click on this operating system and move and confirm. And we're going to tell it where we're going to put it. And two terabyte drive and that's copying over now. Okay, so that's all done. And as you can see, it's got a little arrow there now. So that's showing me it's on the external drive. And if I check the external drive, you can see that it's there. So now if I launch it, so this is launching Debian 12 now with KDE Plasma as a desktop environment. And it launches nice and quick. And we can go full screen. The default password that UTM creates is Debian. So we can tap on the browser and grab that and you can see all that is working still. We go back a story because the Lionesses did well last night. Yeah, that shows up as well. Just amazing how well it runs as a virtual machine on uh, an 8 gig MacBook Air. But what's more impressive is we can add an extra monitor. So here's my R Zopa display. Let's move back a bit. Let's try and get this with a bit less uh, <laughs> reflection on it. Yeah, that'll do. So now I can plug into the HDMI socket on the back. That into here. And I'm gonna need some power, so I'm gonna use a USB-C cable in the monitor. So now that's sort out my displays because they're a bit weird at the moment. It's obviously another video I've been doing using it in vertical. So the Arzopa one here, rotation standard, that's better. And so this is an extended display. So if I grab this, oh, I need to orient them the right way around. So I need to arrange these the other way around, like that. Now I can grab it and go over to the second display. And what's cool about that is because we've got UTM, I can then have Linux on one display by doing this. But I'm also running Mac OS on this one. So I can minimize that and uh, yeah, just use the web browser. We'll go to my YouTube channel. So you can see that's working. But then if I go over to this side, I can tap in here and I can type in Debian. And the reason you would do it this way is because I don't have a lot of storage on this Mac. Uh, so I run emulators, I run all sorts of things on here and there just isn't loads of storage. Uh, I don't know, you find out, we just type in storage. Yeah, storage. So yeah, I don't have a lot of space left, but only about 20 gig. I can run as many operating systems as I want through UTM and I could have a third screen. I've done it before with Windows, Mac OS and Linux all on three screens, all from this machine with eight gig of RAM. Quite incredible really. So if I was to click on news, you can see all that's working. But then if I go back to this one, go back to the browser, this is all working as well. I've just noticed that running two machines at once gets the fan running. So that's my microphone right next to the machine. That's why my audio sounds weird. Just to show you how much noise it makes. Very little actually. So let's check the thermals out. So the lid stays very cool, like 31 degrees or so. The hottest part of the NVMe is around about 45, 46 degrees. So it doesn't come on at 60. Uh, I'm not sure if it's adjustable. Maybe it comes on around about 40 degrees, but it's on at the moment. And it's keeping it around about that sort of temperature. I've plugged in a Windows mini PC, and as you can see, there is only one cable going into it. Now that's coming from the dock. The dock is being powered by a power bank at the moment and it's an N100 mini PC, so it won't be losing loads of power. So 21.6 watts it went up to then. And as you can see, I plugged in loads of drives. Oh, in the back is HDMI, so it's basically going DisplayPort out to HDMI. That's going through the monitor. And then I've got an SD card, a USB stick, which is an SD card reader, a USB drive, which is designed for iPhones. And I've also got my mouse and keyboard plugged in. And I've also got an Oracle SSD drive plugged in there at the moment as well. And so you can see, all working great. All these drives together. So really useful doc, really happy with it. Thanks to Oracle for sending me this to test. Hope all this helps. Please like and subscribe.